good afternoon again. Um, I'll be presenting on behalf of the my colleagues in EPHI who uh, could not make it here. Starting the first slide is on the history of cholera in Ethiopia. So far, we've had uh, over 56,000 cases with a CFR of 0.7%. It has been reported in Ethiopia in, uh, from 2015 to 2021. And this is from all the regions in the country. Uh, but uh, uh, 11 regions in the country, all of them are reported cholera. Currently, there are 12. Uh, so uh, you can see the number of cases there, 866 cases so far in 2021 uh, with a CFR of, of a little bit over 1%. And this is reported from the three regions of SNMP, Oromia, and the Somali regions. Um, the outbreak this year occurred in two outbreak seasons. And, uh, it's hard to interrupt, uh, Dr. Ibidis. Would it be possible to speak louder and close to the microphone? Uh, sure. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Is it better now? Oh, many <laughs> Okay, okay. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, like I was saying, the, currently we have uh, an active outbreak in Ethiopia, and this is in two regions, or Oromia and Somali regions. And uh, the outbreak started on the 9th of August, with the index case from Dolomena, and this is in Oromia region, if you know, if you understand the geography of Ethiopia. And in the NCP, we have 118 hotspots that have been identified and are selected uh, for the next eight years. And this, uh, like I said in the morning, is two years short of the uh, target for the global elimination plan. And the map there shows you the hotspots as uh, we selected them in the Ethiopia. And the graph also showed the cholera outbreak from 2015. You can see in 2016, 2017, when we had a huge outbreak, uh, especially in Somali region of the country. So that's uh, there in the graph. So on the OCV use in the country, uh, the, uh, Ethiopia has conducted uh, reactive and preventive campaigns, and this started in 2019. And uh, of course, uh, in 2019, the vaccine was from the ICG and the South Korean government. Why from 2020, 2022 this year, from last year, it is from the ICG and the GTFCC, both for the preventive and uh, reactive. And uh, the average coverage of these campaigns in the last two years has been uh, 97%. Uh, and the campaigns, if you look at the campaign that was implemented in 2021, uh, we, com we conducted two campaigns. The preventive one was in Tigray, like uh, Malika said, where we did just one round because of the crisis there, uh, we could not continue the second round. And it was uh, targeted at the IDPs with 56.4% uh, uh, coverage. Again, there were challenges in that, uh, during that outbreak, I mean, during that campaign. And the reactive one, which, is, uh, which was done in SNMP and Somali regions, the two regions, and we had a coverage of 98%. Currently, the survey is going on, it's still ongoing and there was no AEFI that occurred in those campaigns. Uh, the impact of the campaign, um, of the OCV campaign is dramatic uh, because we've not had outbreak of cholera in those areas that uh, uh, have uh, conducted the preventive campaign. Uh, the, among the vaccinated populations, we've not had any outbreak so far. And that was uh, one of the, uh, the dramatic uh, uh, impact. It was a big game changer for us in Ethiopia. So we uh, look at the, if all on the top right hand side is the preventive campaign coverage that we conducted in the in Tigray region. And uh, it was targeted at the IDPs and uh, host communities. While the lower one is the reactive campaign that was done in SNMP and Oromia regions. So this show, the colors there show you the first dose coverage and the second dose coverage and uh, the average coverage in the whole places. So that's, uh, that's what the graph is showing us there. So during this campaign, we also did um, 
conducted along with the wash component. That was the wash component side of the campaign. And these activities were implemented both, both before, during, and even after the campaign. And it included the testing of the residual chlorine at the different outlets and the storage sites of the water. Um, that, uh, another part of the campaign that was done in SNMP is the increase in chlorine concentration of the water supply in that region and also the treatment of trucked water supplies in Somali region. Most times the Somali region depends on the trucked waters so uh, the water treatment is important if you must uh, take care of the so that you don't spread cholera in, in, while you're trucking the water. And trucking of safe water in areas with scarcity in cholera, in cholera affected the Cabeles and healthcare facilities in the Oromia region. And also, uh, there is improved toilet coverage, uh, both uh, the private, institutional, and common toilets. And also, the, uh, not just the coverage, also, there is improvement in the utilization of the toilet. And the open defecation uh, in the free waters, Cabeles, increased. So, most of the Cabeles became free. I mean, free of open defecation. Now, the challenges. Uh, one of, uh, at least, if you know what's going on in Ethiopia now, the conflict in the northern Ethiopia is hindering planned campaigns because there were, there have been planned campaigns to take, like for example, the second round of the of the OCV campaign in Tigray, uh, couldn't take place because of the conflict and also the planned ones that were planned in the IDP centers in. Amhara and uh, Far is being delayed also due to the ongoing conflict in those areas. Of course, funding is always inadequate to implement strategies uh, for permanent, you know, to stop the permanent out uh, outbreaks. I mean, to permanently stop the outbreaks that are coming up. The funding is always inadequate. Then we're talk we also know about the shortage of the OCV itself. Currently, there is no stock uh, in most countries including Ethiopia so you have to um, uh, request and wait for it to be approved then there is the delay uh, like I said in the morning of the operational costs when the OCV supply is released you have to uh, wait for the funding to come to be able to conduct the campaign itself I don't know if uh, no. If you now look at the impact of the OCV campaign, uh, the cholera outbreak has not occurred in Waradas, where the OCV uh, has been um, conducted. The campaign has been conducted uh, in the past three years. That was one of the uh, impact we saw with the OCV, and uh, OCV is a game changer for implementation of permanent cholera outbreak prevention strategies. So, if we look at the way forward from the country. Uh, GTFCC to continue the support, the timely support, especially with request, and also to approve the plan, the NCP for implementation. Uh, preventive campaign in conflict IDPs uh, in affected region is the priority at the national level. Uh, once the requ once these requests are approved, the country want to conduct them, especially in the northern part of the country. Uh, further reactive campaign ongoing at uh, outbreak affected waters. So uh, the country is still going to go ahead with the planned campaign in Oromia and Somali region, and this will be done, I think, in the next two weeks from the plan that we have so far. And um, the impact study Marika was talking about, uh, the country is interested in carrying that out so that we can really not just to say that there are no um, outbreak, but to show. To a proof that there was no really uh, the impact of this OCV campaign because we know in the country but we need to prove we need to have a study done to be able to show that truly there was no that was that was an impact in, in that area I think that is my last slide